You are not valued on what the scoreboard says. You're not valued on the size of your waist. You're not valued on the size of your bus. You're not valued on the size of the, the bank account that you have or the car that you drive. You're valued on what is your identity. And until I got really, really clear on who I was and whose I was. All right, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Shit You Don't Learn in College. Today, we've got my good friend, Steve Weatherford. He's a former punter for the Saints, Chiefs, Jags, Jets, and Giants. Uh, you've had an NFL career spanning across a decade, and obviously with the Giants, uh, you won your first Super Bowl championship against the Tom Brady and the Patriots, uh, Super Bowl 46. And in 2011, you were crowned the NFL's fittest man. But you didn't stop there. You didn't stop with your professional Come sports on, keep career. Going, man. That's Come just on, man. that's Pump just the beginning, up. right? That's just the base. That's where we got started. Uh, uh, so you didn't stop there. After your career in sports, you went on to have a career in broadcasting, holding positions at ESPN, Good Day New York, NFL AM, and Sports Illustrated Now. Uh, and you also have one of the top NFL influences on social media. Uh, on top of that, now you live in San Diego. You've got. You've got an amazing seven-figure uh, training and supplement brand. You're the founder of the King's Council, uh, a faith-based legacy-building coaching group for men and women. You've got a beautiful wife, Laura. Mm -hmm. You've got five kids, soon to be six. Yeah, baby. Uh, you know, most of all, I like to just say that you're a good friend and a great family figure Thanks, uh, and, a, and a great mentor to a lot of men out there. But Steve, welcome to the show. Man, Xander, thank you for that uh, that very illustrious uh, introduction, man. And um, and I mean this when I say this, man, it is truly an honor and it, it, is, it is a pleasure to be here uh, just for you and I to be able to record and to be able to share a real conversation. Yeah. You know, and I just want to be really clear from the jump, just with everybody that's hearing my voice right now, I'm not here to talk about all the stuff that, that Xander just rattled off and, you know, what I like to call like my Wikipedia page. Man, I truly <laughs> am, am here for for our conversation to really shift people's perspective, to be able to move them from maybe where they're at um, with a limiting belief or maybe where they're at uh, mentally or emotionally or maybe in your marriage or or in your business, wherever it, wherever you are, man, I'm just praying and believing that the conversations that we had is, is going to land on fertile soil um, and that, that Xander is not wasting his valuable time and his valuable um, efforts uh, to record something that's not truly going to inspire you to action and so i just wanted to thank everybody for um for your most valuable asset that you have on this planet in this lifetime and that's your time so i promise not to waste it and i promise to to be here uh to serve you and and if you guys don't mind the best way that i feel like i can teach and share it is to be able to talk about some of my experiences so we will definitely get into that but with all those things being said xander i love you man i love the friend that you are um and just recently a lot of you guys don't know um, cause you probably have no idea who I am. Um, uh, but, but Xander just recently, <laughs> they will now, man, they will yeah, now. Don't yeah. worry. Well, dude, I'm, I'm glad to be here to, to share a little bit about who, who I am and where, where I'm from and what I've gone through. But really, you know, just like we, we mentioned earlier, the reason is it's not for you guys to follow me on Instagram, although I hope that happens and it's not just for you to listen to my podcast and, you know, I hope that happens as well. But just like, like, um, we were sitting here talking about Xander, it's, is you're doing this because you truly want to teach people shit that they did not learn yeah. when they were in college. And 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 I believe that's the same thing that, that my heart is for, for the coaching that we're doing. It's like, man, I want to be that person that I wish that I had when I had just gotten married. 100%. Or that person that I wish, I wish that I had when I just got out of the NFL. And I was really trying to figure out what direction to take my life. Like, what was my purpose? What was, you know, what was my vision? Because I knew I wanted to be successful, but like, what did that actually look like? So, um, I see all those things to say, man, it's a, it's a joy and it's a pleasure to be here and, uh, let's get this thing rolling. Beautiful, man. Well, let's, let's actually dig into that a little bit. You mentioned, you know, success, right? So I just want to ask you, I mean, you have, you have a great Wikipedia page, man. Yeah. It's right. a beautiful Wikipedia page. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what is success to you? Because you've done a lot of the things that I think, you know, for, for a lot of, uh, young men, they look at your life resume and they'd be like, damn, like that would be success to me. What, what does success mean to you? Oh, man, it's such a good question. And, and my answer would shift depending on the season with which I, I hear that question yeah. asked of me. But the season that I'm in right now, 
the the thing that makes me feel so successful and so significant because I believe that's really what what we're after when people are talking about man I want to be successful well really what I hear people saying is like man I want to be significant right. I want to be valuable to people and and we make up as kids when we're growing up that the people that are on TV or you know the, this generation the people that they see on Instagram that have money and cars and all these different things they're inherently valuable they're valuable yeah. because yeah. they have valuable things and so I got cut up caught up in that in that game as well and and so i i believe it's it's my mission right now in this season to to be possibility i know this is going to sound like really arrogant saying this on a podcast but i'm (laughs) i'm here to speak my truth man like god did such a thing in me three years ago that i want my marriage to be possibility to other men because I wasn't a good husband. You know, I've struggled with drugs. I've struggled with porn. I've struggled with gambling. Like if it's a something that makes dopamine release in your brain, you like I had a problem with it. And, yeah. and it, the same thing for winning, the same thing for building muscle, the same thing for becoming like more popular and more famous is, and I, and I know this will connect with a lot of people that are listening to it is like, your question is like, well, what is success to you? Well, to me, it's significance. And and the only way that I've been able to find like true significance, and I know this is going to sound like very Dalai Lama, but it's serving other people. You know, like it truly like blows my skirt up when I'm able to be something for you, Xander, that that you need in order to get to where you want to go. And I believe when when we can have more of that kingdom mindset, meaning like, dude, there's there's more than enough to go around. And I believe there's a lot of coaches that are out there that wouldn't have somebody like me on their podcast if they're also a coach because they would feel um, possibly intimidated or like, hey, man, if I had this person come on and they kind of believe in the same direction that I do, maybe I'll lose clients. Yeah, the scarcity. It's, yeah, of it it's all. that yeah. scarcity mindset that is disallowing people to get to their next level. But I truly believe that true su- success and significance can only come from alignments. Because yeah. I know that I'm not going to be able to have my maximal impact on this planet in this lifetime if I try to do it alone. You're never going to be able to do it one yeah, man. Yeah. There, there's, a, there's an African proverb that says, man, if you want to go fast, go alone. You but go if far. you want to go far, dude, go together. And yep. I've just seen that to be true in my life. Just with every amazing thing that you rattled off you know, on my quote-unquote Wikipedia page, all of those things, not some of those things, all of those things were achieved through alignments. I didn't achieve any of those things, even like being the fittest man in the NFL. I mean, how many mentors and people taught me how to eat right and how to use glutamine and, and branch chain amino acids and when's the best time to take those and, and how much is too much training and what yep. is German volume training and, and what the heck is hypertrophy and, and what, what is the pump and how good, how often is it to do? All these questions yep. that we have we need those things answered and so i really just wanted to honor you xander because there's a lot of things and a lot of questions that i needed to have answered about a year and a half ago when i was really stepping into this season of of teaching men and teaching leaders how to be better leaders and how to create structure and order in their life and and to be able to you know heal some trauma and move past some some areas in in your marriage and in your relationships and uh, and that was all born out of alignments right. it wasn't until i partnered with somebody who was what i wasn't but also needed what i had as well and and this is biblical when you when you come together in alignments that's what will create your assignments and so for and then i'll kick it back to you in one second but i wanted to tie a bow I mean, you on you can take you can take as much yeah. time as you want no but i know that you have some really good i'm just um, i'm questions. just listening to the preach yeah thank you man so <laughs> so it's it's biblical like alignments and and there was a lot of my, I want to say a lot of my entrepreneurial journey because I've only been an entrepreneur for five years, but a lot of my entrepreneurial journey, I was chasing the assignment. And so the different partners that I aligned with were also pursuing the assignment, meaning they wanted to make money. Right. They didn't care how they made money. They didn't care if it was selling COVID-19 masks or selling CBD snake oil or selling, you know, just different things to make money. They were only concerned, could we convince people to do this? To spend. Yeah. Right. And so I, I partnered with people that had the ability to do business and scale business, but I was completely out of alignment with the integrity with which they were doing it. Yeah. And so those different partnerships would dissolve and not because I'm holier than thou. It's because when I was partnered with somebody like that and they don't have the same vision and the same core principles that I do to serve, then you're no longer serving. You know, it could be even a fitness program that helps people get in better shape and, and become happier and healthier in their family. Like they 
bad partnerships can find a way to ruin something even as pure as that. Yeah. Um, and so I chased a lot of assignments and then I had a mentor step into my life and said, dude, the, the reason, like, look at your track record. You're aligning with people that, that, that it's good ideas. Yeah. And, and good ideas don't make good businesses. You need to look for, for not good, you need to look for great, great people. And it's kind of like when you hire. Yep. You don't hire for competency. You hire the person. Yeah, you hire for character. Yep. You can teach competencies. Um, so all those things being said, success to me is significance. And I've been able to cheat, achieve, achieve significance in my life through serving other people by helping enough people. It's like the Zig Ziglar yeah. quote, help enough people get what they want and you're going to get and what you'll, you want. And you'll get there. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this, like in, in that journey of, of sports and broadcast and, and everything that you've gone through to get to this point now, um, you know, do you feel, do you feel like a lot of that was kind of like you mentioned, like chasing the outcome, maybe the money, maybe oh, the, yeah. Talk, talk to me about that. Yeah, so I feel like the question I'm hearing you ask, Xander, to, and just make it a little bit more clear because I want to answer it real yes. concisely. Say it again. So, so basically, in the achievements, in these, in the significance that you've in the Wikipedia page, let's mm, say, mm-hmm. um, in order to accomplish those things, were you actually chasing alignment? Was it purposeful? Was it fulfilling? Or were you chasing the the outcome, the money, the mm. fame, the you know the dopamine hits? Yeah, I wasn't necessarily. Um, pursuing the dopamine hits, I was pursuing value. I wanted yeah. to be valuable, and and as far back as I can remember, I felt really, really different from everybody else that yeah. on the planet. You know, because I have extreme ADHD, and I know you have you have, you have something <laughs> special about you. I don't know what exactly what it is, but me I me neither yet, man. Me I know, neither. We'll I get know there, that though. your brain and the way that it functions is is unique to other people. Um, but when you're four and five years old and you go to kindergarten for the first time, like it's not something you celebrate. Like right. when you go to school, school encourages people to fall in line. Be part of the group. Yeah, and it community. was really hard for me to, to fit in. And I remember going And that's to, that's literally what we're trying to break right now. Right. Is, you know, school's not supposed to create cookies from a cookie cutter. It makes sense. And everybody's an individual. Everybody's got to figure out their thing and be able right. to align with that, if you will. Yeah, and I believe that God put a gift inside of every single person and I believe the best coaches aren't people that say, hey, I'm going to teach you this skill. People are saying are, the best coaches are the people that help you discover what your gift is. Yep. And then they help you to develop your gift. And one of the things I believe that you're incredibly good at, um, Xander, is is deploying people's gifts. Yeah. Like I believe if people have their gift identified and they're in their process of developing it and then they meet somebody like you, I believe that you're the type of person because I've seen you move in the space when you're, you're helping people. And I, I hear the wisdom and the guidance that you're giving them. You're in your power position when somebody knows what their gift is and they've they've started a little bit of momentum you're so gifted to be like wow okay this is what you could do with a gift like this let me plug it into a system let's create a value letter let's figure out how we're going to get leads like it's such a gift for you because you you can get into somebody else's world and then help them have a bigger vision yeah that's really what a great coach does is they help you discover, develop, and deploy the God-given gift that God gave you. And yeah. that's why coaching to me is so exciting because yeah. you never know what that person's gift is going to be. And if they're willing, their gift is in there, man. And you might have to dig really, you really gotta, deep. you got to help them find but it. But it's there, for, man. For a lot of them for years. It's a guarantee it's there. For a lot of them for years, they've spent, you know, years, decades covering it up, burying it. It's almost like a, you know, we talk about personal development. It's almost like undevelopment. It's like peeling away the yeah. layers to really it's find un, it. It's like an unconditioning. Yeah. You know, because the world really conditioned us to to fit into a box. And when we didn't fit into a box, and I'll just kind of like take us back to, to kindergarten when I realized I was so different. I went to the principal's office the first five days of school in a row yeah. for stupid stuff like pulling a chair out from a girl and then laughing or talking during <laughs> nap time or not standing in line and um and i started to like truly like hate myself mm-hmm. because i just wanted to go to school and not get in trouble and and it was it was crazy and terrible at the same time because if you got in trouble during class when you're supposed to be sitting still they made you stand on the wall with your butt and your back to the wall yeah. while all the other kids are playing. And so like, yes, like 
mentally and emotionally, that was like really bumming me out. But from a physical standpoint, you have somebody who has an extraordinary level of energy yeah. and they need to be able to get the ants out of their pants. And, and so forcing, punish them, make them sit still. Yeah. And then what do you think is going to happen when they go back into the class? And so there was just this, this cycle of like, I don't fit into the box. Yeah. And I began to like hate myself because my older brother, my younger brother, my younger sister didn't have, you know, my disability. And uh, the only time that I ever really felt like celebrated Xander was when I was like in between the chalk lines playing baseball or football or soccer or track when I could compete and like use that energy, this gift that you were given. Exactly. Hyperactivity. Yeah. Yeah. Like split second decision making something impulsively. My brain just does a little bit maybe faster than other people because of ADHD. I talk fast. I think fast. I move fast as an athlete. It's celebrated. And so I like made up in my little boy mind, probably I couldn't tell you the age, but you know, six, seven, eight years old that like I'm valuable, but I'm only valuable when I'm winning. Like I'm not just like, I have to be on this field to be valuable, but then once I'm on this field, I have to win. Otherwise it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so I, the reason I, I share that with everybody that's listening and you Xander is really to kind of paint the picture of, you were talking about this, these Wikipedia pages. And I, I feel like you were asking me, well, what was your motivation? Yeah. And my motivation was to be valuable because I don't know if it was a teacher or it was just the the environment or it was a coach. I just decided at a young age and I know this this can land for a lot of us because we made up our minds at eight years old, kind of like Some, without us really knowing somewhere it, between three and eight. Yeah. Like our identities we, made we up. decided yeah. who we were. And so when Xander was talking about almost like an unconditioning, uh, that's that's what I feel like the last like three years for me has yeah. been because I was able to take like, you know, the trauma, if that's what you want to call it yeah. uh, from that, that childhood and, and really make it work to my advantage in regards to like achieving things. I was yeah. able to, you know, put that into athletics <clears throat> and earn a scholarship and then go to the pros and then, you know, these different things I was able to achieve in building my body up for muscle magazines and stuff like that. But you ask me now why I did that. And I was just trying to get my dad to say, I'm proud of you. Yeah. You know, I grew up with like an old school dad. And, and here's the deal. Like, I want everybody hearing this to know, like, my parents were amazing. They're still amazing. That's They're the, still married. That's the thing. It's like when you when you look at this, you know, you don't have to have gone through a serious trauma to have right. this programming. And every single one of I us mean, what's it. But what's serious trauma? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we only know our own perspective. And I had a teammate that was in college that was orphaned at like two and he was a black dude his name's morris virgil still a good friend of mine grew up in chicago has never met his dad doesn't know his mom and like just had a horrific childhood going from foster home to foster home and he was my college roommate and he was just he went to bed on time he woke up on time he always got his homework done like he was so responsible and he like he was a grown man and like here i am i had amazing parents and i was showing up late to workouts i was missing (laughs) classes and um and he had a way more traumatic um, yeah. childhood compared that, to your compared to and I feel like that's especially for a lot of men that are that are listening to this right now don't compare yeah. any of your life to any other area of any other person's life because God gave you your brain God gave you your experiences for a reason and it's up to us yeah. to make the the best out of them and um what was the question that we were answering? To be honest, I don't even remember anymore, but I don't care. Yeah, good, man. <laughs> well, well me, I hope we tied a bow on let, whatever let, it was we were talking let me, about. Let me ask you this. That's going to happen a lot probably today. It's going to happen a ton. I hope, that, I hope you guys are able to follow along I'm with this totally as we okay color this it. picture totally outside okay of the lines. Um, so, but you, you just brought up something that I think is incredibly important as well. And, you know, you run the King's Council. It's a, it, you know, primarily men. There are women in it as mm-hmm. well. But mm-hmm. you work, you, you do some amazing work with, uh, amazing men, you know, helping them, frankly, helping them become better men. Mm. Right. And when I say become a better man, it doesn't necessarily mean having bigger muscles, making more money. Mm. It's, you know, there's a lot of work that you do with them from a mental standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, from a faith standpoint. Um, you know, we just talked about like being, you know, being able to kind of go back, be vulnerable, be, be open, be like honest, authentic. Like, what do you see? as being one of the biggest issues around like the way that masculinity is, is placed in our society. Mm, man, that is such a, that is such a good question. So what do I see the problem yeah. being, um, I believe we're confused, man. Yeah. I believe just we're really confused because a lot of the, the men that maybe might be on 
social media that are really influencing what we see every single day, yeah, a lot of those men aren't showcasing the core principles of what I believe that God created a man to be. God created a man to, to have integrity. God created a man to have honor. God created a man to be accountable. And I'm definitely not like uh, throwing any shade at, at any one person right now. I'm really just sh- throwing shade on our society that that even like today, right now, like Dr. Seuss books are like under fire, like this whole cancel culture, but like then Nicki Minaj is, and I'm not taking a shot at Nicki Minaj because she's just doing what society wants, but she puts out these, these, um, these videos, like what was the one, uh, fat ass pussy, like the FAP, she puts out songs like this. that are just so grotesque and so gross, but then she makes millions and millions of dollars on it. And so what does that tell my daughters? Yeah. You know, dude, I have four daughters, dude. We didn't mention that in my Wikipedia page, man. Like yeah. four, I'm going to have six kids. My, my son is 13 and then I had four daughters. And so I, my daughters are growing up in a society that, that glorifies women, like essentially giving their body away and exchanging yeah. their integrity for popularity yeah. because it looks like popularity is success. And, it looks and the, like popularity yeah, is and, value, like yeah, we were just well, the, talking about earlier. Yeah, the sad reality is, and you know, uh, my motivation for a lot of the things that I achieved is, you know, with fitness and sports and these different things was was mold- motivated by being valuable. And yeah. what's the number one place that little boys and little girls are going to look to be validated? Yeah. And that's their daddy. Yep. You know, and but here's the deal: I can't get mad at my dad because my dad didn't have a dad that was like, "I'm so proud of you. Yeah. You're doing so good." You know, I just want you to know, like, I'm proud that you have my life last name yeah all I wanted my dad was my dad to say man I'm proud of you but my dad withheld that because I believe that that he made up in his mind if I tell him I'm proud of him then he's gonna let his his pedal off of the metal it's yeah it's it's weak it's gonna prevent you like my my dad's the same way and it's like I know he loves me right like I know he loves the words but he was he was raised by you know his dad was in World War II it was you know they, they went they went through a lot it was different Right. But so. the but the cool thing for me is is like I my dad did so many things right. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that that will be generationally stopped with me. Yeah. You know, my son, every single day that my son wakes up, if if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, um, you see on my Instagram story, I wake my son up every single morning and sometimes it's at different times, but it's always the same words. I'll put my hand on his chest real, real gently and I'll just kind of move it back and forth and I'll say, Wake up, champion. It's time to wake up, champion. We have gifts to develop and we have work to do for the king. And the, and I'm reconditioning yeah. my son's brain to not wake up to think he has to do things to be a champion. I'm waking him up. I'm waking his brain up. And so my vision for doing this, and I've done it for a long time now, is that when he's 22, when he's 23, and he's away from his dad and he's away from his parents, the seed that I planted, the way that he wakes up will be so conditioned, the first thing he'll think every single morning when the alarm clock goes off or he opens his eyes is wake up champion there's work to do and there's gifts to develop and so like to your question it's identity at that point men struggle with identity because they're confused yeah the confusion is creating an identity crisis like you see people like harry styles and i don't even really know who he is but i know he's a he's a musician and he just recently got really popular for being on a magazine cover in a woman's dress yeah. And he's like rocking it like it's like the thing. And so I'm all for fashion. But what do you think that does to a 13 year old boy like mine? It like it totally gives him, Yeah. It gives him total permission to like dress like a girl like that's OK. But God built him to be a man. And so you can dress how you want to dress and talk how you want to talk. But when you look between your legs, there's a dick and balls. And that means you're a man. And so you don't have to act like what everybody else says a man is. But there is there are DNA differences. And, and I believe once we can get really clear on that. And I, I, I'm embarrassed that we live in a country that we have to get really clear yeah. on what your sex is. Um, but with all those things being said, I believe the confusion is I, is creating an identity crisis for men and yeah. not just for men. For women, too. For I mean, women. you think about the Nicki Minaj thing. Like, what's success and value uh, to women? Yeah. Is it if you have a tiny waist and a big butt? And yeah. I'm here to tell you right now, that's not it, dude. Because if you're only valuing yourself, and women hear me when I say this because I know there's a fair amount of y'all on here is if you only value yourself for what you look like at about age 27 
that's a sad day because you're probably a depreciating asset from that day moving forward. Yeah. Like I would assume, you know, the youth and the beauty maybe peaks around 27. Yep. And then every day after that, like, what does that make women feel like? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm here to be a hope dealer for all of the women and all of the men right now. You are not valued on what the scoreboard says. You're not valued on the size of your waist. You're not valued on the size of your bus. You're not valued on the size of the, the bank account that you have or the car that you drive. You're valued on what is your identity. And until I got really, really clear on who I was and whose I was, I want everybody to hear me when I say that again, who I was and whose I was. It wasn't until I understood that I am Steve Weatherford. I'm yeah. a man of integrity honor and accountability i'm a son and a warrior for the one most high so it wasn't until i decided and I, I i realized that god created me for a purpose god created me to serve his children and he didn't say serve my children and don't get paid for it he said serve my children and then people come into my life like you and i get to ask questions i'm like man i feel like god put this huge calling on my, on my life standard but like I'm good at business, but I'm not great. Yeah. Could you help me like take this passion and this drive that I have for teaching men how to be real men? And I'm not talking down to any men because I was in the same struggle three years ago. I wanna meet men where I was at three years ago, broken, beaten, and defeated, addicted to drugs, successful on paper. On the outside. Yeah, but dude, my <laughs> wife was a roommate. My kids were just like, I knew who they were, but I wasn't involved in their life. I wasn't present. I wasn't intentional. I wasn't strategic for their growth. And then I realized, my son's 13 years old, dude. I have four more summers and then my son is gone forever. Jeez. Four summers. So hear me when I say this, because I know there's gonna be some to-be parents that are on here right now, and there might be a few of you right now that have a family. I want you to start looking at your life in summers and not just for your children. Like my dad, my dad's 64 years old. God willing, he makes it another 26 years. That's till 90. And that's if we're lucky, right? And I see him twice a year. So that tells me, it's not, Xander. It's not 26 years with your dad. I'm going to I'm gonna see my 26. dad 52 more times. Yep. Like how intentional and how, like, how much of a sense of urgency rises up in you right now as you're hearing my voice. If you're in the weight room or if you're in your car, wherever you're hearing my voice right now, I want your sense of urgency to go through the roof after this show. I want you to realize that the time you have on this planet is very finite. And there's a there's a, a a movie that I freaking love, and I'm guess you guys could probably how I'm speaking right now, you could probably understand why I love it. It's Gladiator, man. Yeah. I love to see men lay it on the line for something bigger than themselves, and and he has a quote in in that movie. What you do in this life echoes in eternity, and I truly believe that. Like, I believe that I'm gonna die one day, but I'm gonna live every mother flipping day, to the max. Yeah. And a lot of people like or hearing me like, oh man, that sounds awesome. I want to do that too. How do I do that? Well, it takes a whole lot more than just intention and effort. That is absolutely the, the number, like number one thing is like, you have to be motivated and you have to be committed. And a podcast could do that. Like a conversation between yeah. you and I could motivate somebody to take action. But then what happens, you know, when how do you, you, how do you after stay January 1st, how do you keep going? And, it, and now it's January 17th and some adversity hit. Yeah. you've missed like a day or two. What happens then? You know, and that's like the frustrating part for a lot of people. And they do two things wrong. They they rush to action without creating structure and order to, to their pursuit. System. Yeah. So if I, if I could, Xander, I'd love to. I know you have some questions prepared, but I'd love to, to share because you actually kind of segued we into one thing I'd love to share with people today. Because yeah, I know man. there's there's a lot of people that are listening to me right now. Matter of fact, man, I'll just declare it. Every single person hearing my voice right now is a creator. Yeah. Like we were all built to create. And so with that thing being said, well, how do I create? Like, how do I create a life where I f actually feel like I'm maxing out my marriage? I actually feel like I'm maxing out my talents and my gifts. I actually feel like I'm maxing out my relationships, not using them, nurturing all of these things as well. And, and I, I there's a book that, that I found that the, the greatest template for creation, and I didn't have to go very far inside of this book to find this template. It's the Bible. In Genesis yeah. 1, 1, like God teaches us exactly how to create. And so I want what I want the listeners to do right now, if you have pen and papers to to take some notes right here or maybe listen to this section two times. And I'll do my best not to butcher this. It's not something that I've taught a ton. It's something I'm studying right now, but I'm trying to find a way that this blueprint for creation, like an area that it doesn't work. 
because it works for starting a business. Yeah. It works for creating a relationship. It works for creating um, healing in your marriage. It works for getting in shape. It works for scaling your company. It's the I call it the seven days of creation. I didn't create this guy, so <laughs> I, I'll say that right now. So I don't have the trademark for this, but it, it was really simply so. Patent, patent pending. Yeah, in yeah. the in the first day, like there was only darkness, right? And so, what did God create? He created light. And the reason I believe that God created light and how we can apply that into our template of creation is, well, if God created light, that means he wants us to first have vision for what we want. And that was day one. And day two, God created the clouds and the ocean. And what I believe God is trying to tell us that we should create in the second day, the second step of creating a business or creating a relationship or creating healing is atmosphere. Think about it. You know, like as a business builder, yeah. Man, atmosphere, atmosphere and, environment. and culture. Yeah. Oh, it's so important, man. I mean, I've been on you know such successful football teams, like world champion teams, yep. like unforgettable, immortal teams that people will will remember that forever. It's etched in stone that I was a champion, but I was a part of a team. And before I became a part of that team, there was somebody that had vision, and there was somebody that came into the locker room and said, "This is the culture, and this is the atmosphere that we're going to operate in." And culture, yeah. really simply, for people listening to this, culture is what you're willing to accept. Yeah. And, and culture is also what you're willing to not accept. Yep. Um, so we'll move to day three and I hope, I I know I'm moving really quickly here and that's why I say, you know, take some notes or maybe listen to this twice in day three, God created the land, the plants and the trees, essentially like what you and I stand on. That's what God created. And what, what I believe that teaches us at the third step, when we want to create anything, Xander is we have to have structure to it, yeah. you know? And, and one of the mistakes I made was I am a visionary and I actually, much like you, you're a visionary and you like always have such an incredible attitude and your attitude creates that culture, right? Um, one thing, one step that I failed at is I would skip over structure and I would actually skip over the fourth step and I would go right to execution. Go straight into action. Right. So we'll, we'll get to those That's days. Still every, entre- every entrepreneur yeah, does that, so, right? Not all of them because yeah. some, some entrepreneurs are visionaries. Yep. And, and they'll get stuck in the structure, yep. stuck in the planning, stuck in the paralysis by analysis. And I know some of you entrepreneurs and coaches out there are freaking hearing me right now. So I want to move on to day four. We just finished structure. So we don't want to move to the next day until we have that day intact. So you don't want to move to creating an atmosphere where you don't have a vision. Right. So that's why I believe this template for all the entrepreneurs and and creators out there that are listening to this, this is sequential. So if you're having problem with your with your dream coming to life, Go back to step one. What is your vision? Do you have the vision? Oh, your yeah. vision is clear? Okay, well, what is the atmosphere that you've created? Is it healthy? Okay, cool, that's healthy. Well, what is the structure and the plan that you have? Ooh, I've got a gap there. Okay, so day three was structure. On day four, God hung the moon, the stars, and the sky. Yeah. The moon, the stars, and the sky. You know what that does for us? That gives us day and night. You know, as the earth is rotating, it gives us day and night, it gives us light and dark, time to rest and time to work. That's order. And a lot of entrepreneurs really struggle with order. And the reason we struggle with order is because we didn't do step three. We didn't create we didn't the structure. Have, we didn't have the structure. So if you don't have structure, order. how do you can can you have order, right? Yeah. How can you have order in a relationship, meaning like a communication style in a marriage? You can unless you have structure. Like, And you're like, hey, baby, we've been married for 14 years, much like me and my wife. Well, literally in 2020, we cr- recreated a whole different communication style and the reason we did that is because we realized our marriage wasn't what we wanted it to be so we went back to the drawing board and be like baby what is the vision that we have for this marriage right and and then we asked ourselves like what is our attitude about this like what is the atmosphere you and i have and we identified that was one of the problems because we had date night we had structure and we had order we knew that we weren't going to be on our phones during date night on all these different things and different communication times during the week we had those things but then what we realized is our attitude about the time that we were spending together, it wasn't like team attitude. Yeah. It was like, I'm tired. I'm going to use our date night to like relax. To, yeah, to you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I hope that is really giving clarity for people through these first four steps of, of creation. And then day five, once you have order, right? So day four was order. And day five, what did God create? He created the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea. What do birds do and what do fish do? They move, dude, right? They're fast. Like fish move and birds fly. But they don't have much of a personality, right? Yeah. Like you buy a goldfish and you're really excited about it at the fair or something. You come home, you put it in your like, Two minutes oh. later. Yeah. You're like, uh, come, come, fetch, fetch. You know what I mean? Like, and the fish is just there. 
boom, and you're like, dude, this sucks, right? Yeah. They don't do much, but they move. Yeah. And that's what I believe God is trying to tell us. Day five is once you have the vision set, you have the atmosphere set, once you have the structure, once you have the order, now it's time to move. Now it's actually time to take action. Yeah. Um, and then in the sixth day, that's when God created man and woman and the beasts of the field, you know, like dogs and cats and horses. But there's a difference between those animals and the fish and the birds. You can have a relationship yeah. with the dog. You can have a relationship with the man or a woman. And that is the day that I believe God is telling us, once you have a vision for your life or for your business or for your fitness, and you've created an atmosphere and you've created structure and planning, you've created order and, and, and you've started to move, you've created momentum. That's when I believe, Xander, that you are incredibly invaluable to people think about what I yeah. said earlier is once people have discovered and developed and maybe got a little bit of momentum in it and then somebody like you comes into their life or somebody like me comes into their life and teaches them how to monetize and further develop that gift that's when you and I are doing what I like to call living our heaven on earth yeah that's when like you can work 12 hour days and it's almost like it's not work anymore oh my gosh like I can't believe I just logged 12 that was amazing like my wife is actually telling me shut it down it's time to have dinner with the kids yeah. and I've been rolling since 5 a.m. Yeah. like that is living heaven on earth but in order for us to live our heaven on earth it takes more than us like going to church on Sunday and praying our prayers or like whatever your thing is rubbing your crystals together or doing your yoga I'm not taking shots at anybody whatever your faith system is mine mine is Jesus Christ. Yeah. But with that, with that being said, when I didn't know who I was and whose I was, I would never be willing to run a game plan like what I just explained to everybody else. You know, I, I, I was, I was like, I was above that. I was a Super Bowl champion, you know? And so I hope this really makes sense to everybody when we go through these seven days of, and I'll do it really quickly one more time. Cause I know yeah, I, I was really, going to say, can you, can you, Run through those. Yeah, I, I really, really fire, helpful. I really fire hose you guys with this, and, and I apologize. But, but even, I even you know, we kind of, we kind of talked about it in generic principles. But I want everybody, as, as Steve runs back through this, you know, think about how this could be implemented in your business. Think about how this could be implemented in your relationship with your significant others. Think about this, how this could be implemented in your health, your wellness, whatever goals that you might have yeah. there. Anything you want to create, yeah. anything you want to change. Yep. Because in order for you to change something, you have to create. Yeah. You have to create time. You have to create energy. And you I have think, to create vision. I think something that you hit on as well, you know, if anything that you want to change, right? You mentioned something a little bit earlier in the podcast. You said, um, you know, we, we basically are what we accept and what we don't accept. Mm, culture. Right? That culture side of it. And and so, you know, reality is like if you want something to change, well, the first step is you have to stop accepting it. Yeah. Right? And once you stop accepting it, then you can start to go through these principles and actually implement in any area of your life. Yeah, that's that's good. And one of the things that you said is like what you accept and what you reject. You yeah. Know, you said don't accept. But you know what? The word I'd like everybody to hear Xander say, and I'll put it in his mouth form, is reject. <laughs> I said it. Yeah. I Re said reject. Re okay, good. Everybody he said reject. Heard you heard it? Everybody we're not gonna, heard it. We're not going to edit this podcast. Yeah. He said reject. And the reason that Xander <laughs> said reject is because Xander doesn't know it, but there's a scripture in the Bible that says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what that tells me is this world is doing everything it can to conform you and I, yeah. because it wants us, the media wants us to play play ball like oh, they yeah. want us to play ball. Social media wants us to do it like they want us to do it. And they're like all of these different, like big freaking companies are all conspiring to challenge us and to conform us. And so what I believe that that verse means to me is like, no, all we need to do is renew our mind and what we decide is our path is our path. And so when we talk about yeah. value and we talk about my daughters growing up, I don't let them watch TikTok. I don't let them get on Instagram. I am really, really careful about what I let my daughters watch on YouTube. I only let yeah. them watch the YouTube Kids app. And even that, I filter things out of that because I don't want what some 12 year old kid is creating in their basement to just be totally available to my yeah. daughters. And, and that's what it is. It is and now consumable to everybody. It's so consumable and there's no filter. And so I am just very intentional and I'm very strategic with my daughters and also myself. Yeah. Hear me when I say this leaders, I'm intentional about myself. I'm 38 years old. I'm a Super Bowl champion. I've made a fair amount of money in my life. I got a good Wikipedia page. I am still not disciplined enough to watch whatever it is that I want. Oh, yeah. Because here's what happens. 
when we when we allow things to just come into our brain that we don't decide we want in our brain or come into our ears, it will start to change the way that we think. And if we allow things to change the way that we think, it will change the way that we speak. When it changes the way that we speak, it will change the way that we do. If it changes the way that we do, it will change the way that we be. And what you be is your destiny. You know what I mean? And, and so, in, like, and in your case, what you be is also your kid's destiny. Yeah, man. Well. They're, they're modeling it's my what legacy, they're, yeah, dude. they're modeling what they're seeing you, your legacy, yeah. Right, so this is just a, an encouragement, but also a challenge to everybody that's hearing me right now is, I know a lot of you guys are coaches, but I challenge you to focus more on you than you do on your customer avatar. Yeah. Because the, the, the more developed you become, that ceiling of how capable you are as a leader now becomes the ceiling for every single person that you coach. And I'll also encourage a lot of people that are listening to this that are thinking about getting into coaching. You only need to be a half a step ahead of somebody in order to lead them. But you always need to be taking territory. You always need to be learning. You always need to be growing. And you always need to be pursuing, not assignments. You always need to be pursuing alignments because in inside of alignments is when God will unlock assignments for you. I couldn't tell you how many masterminds that I've been in that businesses have been born from inside of the mastermind people will bring a business and they want to have a solution and they want to scale from seven figures to eight figures and they come into to the mastermind looking to get help for that and they end up aligning with somebody with inside person. of there yeah and, and and they end up birthing a business from that that ends up going nine figures yep. but it's because they came into a think tank they came into a community and that's how God created us that's yeah. why coaches and the people listening to me right now are so valuable for the human race because we need people to run the race with us man yeah that's how we're built yeah let's go back to the seven okay now I'll review <laughs> yeah thank you man thanks for putting me back on the track okay I got you. this so, is the structure in the order yeah. that we need well you know what dude you put me back on the track but you took me off the track earlier <laughs> so I, I'll take the blame for that one I'll take the blame for that one <laughs> no man I'll eat it day one all right so so in summation of this this is to create anything, anything, relationships, marriage, business. Day one, God created light so you and I could have vision. Day two, God God hung the clouds and the ocean so you and I could decide what our attitude is going to be because our attitude is what creates the atmosphere. You are the thermostat. You are not the thermometer. Day three, God, God gave us land, plants, trees. He gave us the earth. And that's something to stand on. That's structure. That's when God wanted you to create structure. Day four is when God hung the moon, the sun, and the stars so we could have day and night. So there's order to the way that we operate. Day five, God created the birds and the fish. Birds and fish move and don't do much else aside from that. And that's when God wants you to move. He wants you to create momentum. He said, hey, you've got your vision. You've got your atmosphere. You've got your structure. You've got your order. Move, Steve. Move, Xander. Move, Tevin. Move, Molly. Move, Jessica. It's time to take action. And then day six, God created the man, men, women, and animals. That's when God said, it is time for you to have relationship with, with people. It is time for you to create alignments with people so businesses can be born, so products that can be created, so, so cures and books and podcasts can be created because you're not enough. And day seven, we didn't cover this earlier. Yep. God said, this is good. I created a good thing. Let me sit back and enjoy it. Let me be at peace. And that's what that's what God is telling us. You've done all that you can. Let me take over. And for a lot of years, I worked seven days a week. Yeah. Because I thought I needed to do that in order to get my edge. And then once I started living biblically, meaning like following a game plan like this, and even though if I had a lot of work to get done, I honored the Sabbath. And for 24 hours, I'm just with my family. I'm not doing Instagram stories or emails or any of those things. And a supernatural thing happened. I ended up having more energy, more focus, and I was actually happy for yeah. Monday morning because I had a day with my family. And you're like, getting, you're getting why more, am I doing what I'm doing? In six days than you would have. It's so I can be yeah. with my family. So why would I work, 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 and not be with my family if family is the most important thing to me? Yeah. And so I hope that that summed it up and 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 went through it really well. You might have to listen to this again and. I will say this, I'm not the greatest teacher, but I'll tell you what, man, if you give me a game plan or a book like a coach would when I was in the NFL, I will run that book, man. I will run those plays. I will bring discipline. I will bring consistency. And because of that, I believe God will bring fruit into my life because of my obedient action. Yeah. I love it, man. Beautiful. Thanks, I, feel, man. I feel like we could dig into this for, for hours. We'll do another show, man. We'll do, I, enjoy, we'll do another, I enjoy spending time. We'll with do you. another show, man. Um, but that being said, I do want to, I do want to hit on something that I think, you know, for anybody who's listening to this episode, 
uh, or watching this episode, um, you're getting a nice dose of Weatherford energy. Come on, man. And uh, you know this is this is one of my favorite things about you. It doesn't matter doesn't matter what room you walk into, like you can feel it. Like I, I not just because the ground shakes a little bit, but like <laughs> I can actually feel your energy in a Thank room. You, man. Um, that is good, man. What you, you know, I, I think you talk a lot about how you were you were blessed with great gifts, mm. uh, both physically, mentally, um, you know, energy wise. You were blessed with a lot of great gifts, um, but you also, you know, you do a lot to cultivate this. You do mm. a lot to cultivate this passion, this drive, this energy. You know, I know we were talking about uh, cold cold exposure, things like that. Like, what do you? What do you do to cultivate your mind, your energy, your passion that really helps you be Steve? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I don't want to be like one of those douchebags. It's like, here's my millionaire morning routine. But truly, (laughs) you know, when we talk about momentum um, and how you start the day, I'm really, really intentional and I'm really, really... um, I'm strategic about what I put into my brain and what my morning process is like. And I'll just yeah. share with you. And it would change depending on the season that I'm in. But All the depends season, on where you're at. Yeah, yeah, the season that I'm in right now, like the way that I started my morning this morning, the way I start probably at least six mornings a week, except for on my Sabbath, is I'll get up pretty early. Typically before the sun comes up this morning, it was extra early because we did men's prayer at 530. But um, typically I would say I get up at about 530. And the first thing I do is I run a hot bath and I just lay in the hot bath and I'm like, zero productivity yeah for 10 minutes and i just lay there and sometimes i pray and sometimes i don't want to pray and i just lay there but i believe regardless if you're praying or not if you're just creating quiet for yourself i believe god can speak to you right yeah. like not like audibly but god will bring thoughts and yep. pictures to your mind and 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 things like that so 10 minutes just pure quiet or prayer um, and then I have a 10 minute devotional that I do that is actual papers. It's not on my phone next. And I have a notepad and, and my devotional next to the tub. So that's the first 20 minutes of my day. Then the next thing I do is I come outside. You see my cold tub right over yep. here. Um, I get in there typically between 37 and 42 degrees and I get in up to my neck for two minutes. Um, and that's really kind of how I prime the pump. It's kind of yeah. like imagine a NASCAR. Um, they don't just start the engine up and then go 200 miles an hour. Right. Like they, they warm themselves up much like me. I was a professional athlete for a decade. I didn't just like show up at the stadium in my and start suit. Kicking, start yeah. kicking footballs. Yeah, yeah. Show up in the stadium with my suit, take it off, put my uniform on and then go play a game that people watch on TV. We got to the stadium five hours before the TV's turned on, you yeah. know? Um, and so I just, you know, those little nuances that I learned when I was younger, now I'm applying it into other areas of my life. And the reason I do that is... It says in the Bible that we should give God our first fruits. And that doesn't just mean like you should tie the 10%. I believe that's what right. most people think that means. But your first fruit is also first your first part of your day. Yeah, the first part of your day. Like the best part of my day, the the most energetic, I don't want to say most energetic, but the pl- the time when I'm most like non-distracted yeah. is going to be first thing in the morning. And I don't touch my phone because that will just bring panic and will bring yeah. anxiety and tension and, you know, I'll just start problem solving. And so I give that first fruit to God and then I get in the cold tub. And then after that, like my freaking temperature or not my body temperature, but my, my engine is pumping oh, yeah. because th- that cold water, whoo boy, it wakes you up. <laughs> um, so there's definitely like a, a mental, there is a um, spiritual and there is a physiological priming of the pump that I do in the morning. And the reason I mentioned that to everybody listening to you, Xander, is you ask the question, um, how do you have the energy to keep doing the all, the, the all these in the drive and, yeah. to do the, all these different things? And there's a scripture that's in Romans that really, really spoke to me last year. And it says this, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the suffering produces endurance. And that endurance produces character and character produces hope. And what I believe that that speaks to me because everybody can interpret it how they want to interpret it. But the way I, that speaks to me is, is encouraging us to rejoice in our sufferings. So like when you and I lift weights together, typically when I'm around you, I mean, you've mentioned it to me, so I don't want to speak for you. You lift heavier weights and you do maybe more oh, reps. Yeah, I'm, because, on, I'm on off weeks and somehow yeah, I just get going. Yeah, man. <laughs> because, you know, when you, it's just in it. I'm sure like there's a motivating factor to me. But just when we're with people, yeah. we just want to go farther. Um, and so I have just found it to it's much easier for me to rejoice in my suffering, meaning like I did eight sets of lunges um, 
but I know if I do two more sets, man, I'm going to get stronger and I'm going to get closer to yeah. my goal. If I'm with somebody, they'll be like, let's just freaking do it, you know, or maybe I'm the person that's like, man, let's just freaking do it. Yeah. But we'll do it with a smile on our face and we'll be happy because we're suffering and we're doing it together. together. And so I believe there's in, in military, you were in military, man, yeah. in, in military and in football and just in team, team sports in general. That's what like training camp is all about. It's about that Crawling through the mud with Yeah, people. that collective yeah. suffering. And what this verse says is he said, We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the suffering produces endurance. And so what that speaks to me is like as we're if if we're willing to rejoice while we're suffering, that will lead to endurance. But if yeah. we don't rejoice in our suffering, it's we're not gonna get any fruit not, from yeah. it. And so the next part it says is it will produce endurance. And then it says that endurance produces character. And what that speaks to me is like in order for you to grow muscle, you're going to have to go to the gym and do repetitions and repetitions and repetitions and be consistent. But unless you bring that positive attitude and you're lifting the amount of weight that's going to challenge you and you're rejoicing in that, like, let's grab more because you're with friends that are making you do more, do more reps, do more weight. If you rejoice in that, that's going to build up your endurance to be able to do that more often. And if you can do that more often and challenge your your arms or your legs at that intensity level more often, that's going to in, that's going to create muscle for you. And that's what I believe the Bible is saying that endurance produces character. Yeah. And so character or muscle to me means the same thing, because when I walk into a room, people notice me, maybe not just because of the energy that you talk about. I'm a little bigger than most you're dudes. large you're large human. right and i've worked really hard to develop <laughs> my arms and it's one of yeah. the first things that people notice about me and i've worked really hard at it because i used to have skinny arms when i was in the nfl but people notice that the muscle and they instantly can know things about me they know that i'm disciplined they know that i work hard they know that i'll make sacrifices etc etc well it's the same thing for character when somebody walks into a room and their reputation precedes them they're like oh that's sander fryer man i'll tell you what dude that guy's heart is really for people he really cares about people getting results your reputation your character actually arrived into the room before you did but if you don't rejoice in your suffering and get some endurance that will lead to muscle aka a character yeah how is that going to inspire anybody so the last part of this verse says after you after the endurance produces character that character produces hope and so what muscle and what character i believe does for other men is it gives them possibility they're yeah. like dang there's steve weatherford i remember watching him on the giants and like dude he wore long sleeves for every single nfl game that he ever played in i've never actually even seen his arms and now look at him his arms are freaking massive yeah they can see that I worked on something. They they can see the fruit of it, and that gives them hope. But we, you and I, and when you develop character, you develop muscle, and you showcase that to other men or, or other leaders, they're going to be inspired by that. But you can't get to that muscle or that character unless you rejoice in your suffering, and you let that suffering produce endurance, and you let that endurance produce character. So let me let me let me ask you about. Did that make sense? It made a ton of sense. Okay. My question, my question to you, you know, one of the things that we were just talking about is you know, one of the big problems with our society and masculinity is this lack of identity or yeah. or not having that identity or maybe we could call it character. Yeah. Right. So it sounds to me like if if somebody out there listening right now is lacking identity, lacking clarity, lacking that character that they really want to mm. feel valued. Yeah a great place to start is to put yourself through the trials yeah. to put yourself into some form of struggle mm. and suffering to mm. actually start building that endurance. Yeah. Well, I think even before throwing yourself into the fire, which is good because I feel like if you throw yourself in the fire, eventually you're going to figure out really who you are because yeah. you'll be exposed. But one thing I believe is incredibly powerful to bring into that battle. You know, when you say jump yeah. into the fire, it's like going into Vietnam with an M16, but no bullets. But, but no bullets and no training. Right, so like how yeah. are you going to handle the situation that's around you if you just jump right into the fire? And so um, the analogy I want to make is like if I was going to drop you in Vietnam or like, you know, Desert Storm and you were supposed to do some, do some work for America, I'm going to make sure that you have bullets, that you can yeah. take territory in order, I believe, for me to take territory in my life. 
you have to figure out what your identity is first before yeah. you jump into the fire. And so my encouragement and my challenge to people listening to this is it, it's, it's as simple as coming up with an I am statement. The men that I coach, we call it a contract. You yeah. know, when I got into the NFL, they gave me a contract and said, hey, if you be this for us, we will give, we you, will this. give you this. Right. So yeah. there was a reward system to it. And so the reward system I talked to my men and my women about is the reward system is significance. Mm -hmm. This is your contract. Could you could you share that? Could you share the I ams that you yeah? Like, so my I, I actually yeah. I actually because shared I do, them earlier. I do this, yeah, I do this myself actually, yeah. and I didn't. Well, you were I, successful I, and I, significant, <laughs> so I am not surprised, Andrew. You don't have to have Jesus but Christ have, live inside of you for for these principles to work. Yeah, you know, I, I I have a. It's it's funny. I share this with a lot of my clients. I have a note card that I've had on my nightstand since the day that I started my business, and it says, "I am a warrior. I am mm. a leader. I am <clears> strong." I have faith. I live my life from a place of love, growth, and purposeful action. Mm. And that's all. Mm. But I read that every single day. That's I read good. it first thing when I wake up. I read it at night before I go to sleep. I, I say I read it, but I don't even have to read it anymore. I just have the note card like on my counter, really and I, I see it out of the corner of my eye, and it just goes through my head. Yeah. Right. But for, for months when I was first doing it, I literally picked it up and read it. Right. Um, but it is this, it's this I am, it's this identity that I've mm. created as a person that you know, has really driven a lot of the actions that I've taken throughout the rest of my life. Well, the, the two most powerful words on this planet, Xander, are I am. I am. Because the words that come after form our freaking identity. They yep. form our reality. They, perform, they, they form our perspective. And so you actually, um, right before you shared, you, um, you said, well, could you share a few of mine? And I actually shared it earlier. Um, I am Steve Weatherford. I am a man of integrity, honor, and accountability. Stop. Yep. That's it. So if you guys just heard it, Zan, earlier, Xander said, are you struggling with identity? Or are you struggling with character issues? Well, once you figure out what your identity is, your core principles and your character starts to get developed in that moment because you've, you're, you're no longer interested in something. You're committed to it yep. because there's no negotiating I am. Not like, well, I'm planning to be. No, it is a declarative <laughs> statement. It is truth. It is yeah. fact. Yeah, it is fact. And so you might feel kind of corny when you when you pick these character traits that you believe will unlock you. Because when I created my I am statements, my contract uh, three years ago, I, I didn't feel like a man of integrity. I didn't yeah. feel like a man of honor. I didn't feel accountable because... I would always exaggerate things, you know, and it started when I was younger because I always wanted to be more valuable. And yep. so I would maybe bench press and, you know, bench press 90 pounds. And I remember getting in the car with my dad when I was like 13 or 14 years old and being like, dad, I bench pressed a hundred pounds for the first time. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. My dad didn't care if it was 92 pounds or 122 pounds, but in my little boy mind, I always had to exaggerate in order to, to be valuable. And so three years ago, I made that part of my contract yeah. because I told myself, man, I am valuable and what I am is what I am. And if other people accept it or love it or affirm it, that's great. But I'm playing for an audience of one. And so as people are creating your contract or your I am statements, whatever you want to call it, I want you to create this not to try to satisfy the judgments of other people. At the end of the day, what is going to make you proud of you? Because I believe that's the hardest thing on this earth to do is to be proud of ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I'm able to be proud of myself every day, not based upon what I accomplished on a to-do list, because I believe a lot of our, a lot of us value ourselves on like, what did we get done today or yeah. this week or this month or this quarter? Oh, a lot? Good. It was a good quarter or month yeah. or day. Um, and I've been able to kind of flip that value system on its head because I understand because of you know studying the Bible and mentorships and, and life experiences that God didn't create us to be human doings. God created us to be human beings. And so the challenge to everybody is like, what do you want to be? Yeah. I want to be a man of integrity, honor, and accountability. And the reason I want to be those things is I know that if I give men something to respect and I give God something to work with by developing myself, when he gives me opportunities, when he gives me relationships, when he gives me business opportunities, I'm going to steward that well. Yeah. Because in between God saying, go do this or, hey, go be with this person, I'm going to be attentive to that and I'm going to make sure that I steward it well. I'll never do it perfect. But God doesn't care about perfect. He only cares about our heart. 
and my heart is for people. My heart is not perfect. Yeah. And I make mistakes all the time. I mean, I'll come on here and like, I may seem like I'm coming off holier than thou. Dude, I was putting drugs up my nose three years ago. I am the furthest thing away from holy or righteous. And that's the reason I am a Christian. That's the reason that Jesus does live inside of me because I was broken, beaten and defeated. And then just like we said, you know, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. I was conformed to the patterns of this world. I was yeah. exchanging my integrity for popularity on Instagram by posting and kind of like trying to be things that I truly really wasn't and once once I figured out who I was and whose I was and with this contract really helped me because it's easy for us to be like yeah I know God created me and I know that God's there and you know I actually probably believe maybe that that Jesus was real you know maybe he's, I'm not ready for him to come into my heart but I believe he was a real person well it takes more than that God just doesn't want you to pray and believe God wants you to be bold to take action there's also another verse that says ask and it will be given to you knock and the door will be opened seek and you will find but if you'll notice in that verse it requires action all of them yeah every single one of them ask is a you, verb you do something yeah. seek do something knock do something and so that's encouragement to all of us out there man god loves you god has a purpose for you but in order for you to step into that you got to do something man give other people something to respect give god something to work with like what you do for god will never be useless i love that man Oh, Steve, I could sit here all day. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> I enjoy it too, I can, man. I can sit here all day. We're definitely going to have to do another one of these. Um, but that being said, I have a couple of quick questions for you, and we'll wrap it up here. First that, that's, one. That's Xander saying, Steve, don't give me a 10-minute answer. <laughs> first, first, first one here. Uh, you can give a 10-minute answer. It might no, just get man. cut a little bit short. Uh, so first one here, and I think I know the answer to this one. What's been your most recommended book recently? Hmm. Well, I mean, I know I quoted a ton from the Bible, but I understand for people that maybe are a little bit more green in their walk, um, a, a book that was really good for me to start just making decisions based upon, like a pro decision is making decisions based upon what you're committed to and not what you're feeling like. Yeah. Um, and I listened to the, I, I can't read, I don't want to say it, I'm not, I cancel that. I have trouble reading now. I listen to books. And yeah. so my son and I listen. enjoy listening to books. Yeah, I really do. I retain a lot more information yeah. if I can walk and listen at the same time. That binary stimulation can't hurt me by David Goggins. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's myth missing a little bit of the faith component for me to make that like something that I can just like, dude, I'll take this game plan and run it because it's not from the Bible. But man, his experiences really spoke to me, really spoke yeah. to my son in regards to us up leveling what we thought we were capable of. I love that. Yeah, but the Bible is my number one. But... You know that. <laughs> Can't hurt me close number two. Yeah. Fair enough. I'll take it. Um, From the book of David Goggins, verse one, chapter 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, one more question for you. Uh, and we have talked about this a little bit. Obviously, you've made great money. You've you've built a very you know successful, stable life here mm. uh, financially. Um, what to you is more important than money? What is more important than yeah. money? Oh man, dude. Well, here's the deal. I feel like my whole mission and purpose is when I die, I don't believe that like it's over. Yep. You know? And so what's more important to money to me is, was when I'm standing before God, you know, and like all the craziness and everything's gone and it's just me, there's nobody else there and it's just God. And he asked me with the time and the talents that I put inside of you, what did you do with them? Did you multiply them? Did you share them? Did you serve with them? And I want to have such a good answer for him. And then he's going to ask me another question. He's going to be like, Steve, I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to live on the earth, to live a perfect life, to show people, to be an example of what love is, of what forgiveness is, of what wisdom is, of what generosity is. And then, and then he was crucified on the cross and, and he was buried for three days and then he rose again. How many people did you tell about my son? And how many people did you explain to them so fully that they wanted that peace and they wanted that power and they wanted my son to come live inside of them? I want to have a really good answer for him, Xander. Yeah. And I want to be able to look over my right shoulder because I can see it in my mind. And I want the line to be so long that even if you pull out binoculars, you can't see the end of the line. And it's not because of me. It's because I live such a reckless life away from God that when he got his hooks in me, he transformed me and he renewed my mind. I set myself on fire in the remaining days that I had on this earth. Anytime I had an opportunity to come on a podcast or just to speak to a person at a gas station, I, I want to feel so confident and tell 
God dead in his face. I know I didn't do it perfect, God, but my heart was for you. My heart was for your people. And, and, and I hope you can accept that. And so that to me is what's more important than money. Beautiful, man. I love that a ton. Thank you for that, Steve. Thanks, man. Uh, what's on the horizon for you and where can people learn more about Steve Weatherford? Ooh, man, uh, I, the best place for, for you to hear a little bit more, more conversations about faith, family, fitness, time management, marriage um, is going to be my podcast. It's the Steve Weatherford Show. Uh, would love for you to go over there and subscribe to that. And then the best place um, aside from that is going to be um, Instagram. You get the best view of my life unedited. And the, large, and the large biceps. Yeah, and you'll get some fitness and some nutritional <laughs> help on there as well. And that that's um, weather for five. I'm sure you can put the link in the show yep, notes. We'll put it in there. Um, but aside from that, man, like uh, any questions that you guys have or if you found sections of this podcast really valuable, I would love for you to text me. Uh, my number is 949-763-5934. And yes, I am the one that message you, messages you back. And one thing that you can expect from me if you do message me is every morning at around 6 a.m., I'm going to send you a text message that I wrote that morning after I sat in the tub and, and prayed and did my devotional and got in my cold tub. The first thing I do is I send a text message out of whatever's on my heart and the encouragement and the life that I want to speak into the people that allow me to do that. Um, and then in addition to that, I will send you my podcast in the text message once a week, just so you guys know I'm not hustling you. <laughs> um, but I will I will send you reminders when my podcast comes out and I'll send you encouragement every morning. And to be honest with you, that's actually my favorite place to engage right now because Instagram just doesn't show my content to everybody. And so the people that really, really want to get on board and really want to, yeah. you know, take some massive territory and, and really get clarity on who they are and whose they are is text messaging because, you know, when Instagram shuts it down and makes us all pay for people to see our stuff, I want to be able to message people. Beautiful. Man. So thank you guys for having me. Man. Yeah, everybody, everybody out there, make sure to make sure to text Steve, make sure to hop on his podcast, subscribe. Cool. Thank you, man. Uh, dude, thanks for thanks for joining today. Been amazing, brother. I love you, man. Thanks love for having you, me. Boss.